This is a part of my series on words we say in worship. You know, those words the liturgist uses to introduce parts of the service, words that help maintain the flow of worship. Most of these little sayings are either direct quotes or paraphrases of scripture. But there are a few of these phrases that actually come from other sources. It is one of these to which we turn today. Hello, I'm Stuart Baskin, pastor of First Presbyterian Church of Tyler, Texas, and this is your daily devotional for Monday, March 7th, 2022. When it comes time to receive the morning offering, we don't simply get up and say, let us receive the morning offering. Instead, we frame it with well-known sayings about giving. It is better to give than to receive. Give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, but freely and joyfully, for God loves a cheerful giver. And you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, who though he was rich, yet for our sakes he became poor, that we by his poverty might become rich. But one of my very favorite of these introductions actually does not come from scripture, but from a hymn. And if you pay attention during Lent, we actually use these words as the doxology in place of the standard glory be to the Father. Appropriately enough, it comes from a Lenten hymn entitled, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. Now, there are two different tunes in the hymnal that we use for this hymn, and we sing the less familiar tune, Rockingham, as we sing the doxology. But you are more familiar with the other setting to the tune called Hamburg. Let me sing it for you. Were the whole realm of nature mine, that were a present far too small, love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul my life, my all. This text was written by Isaac Watts way back in 1707. Watts was a Congregationalist minister in England in the late 16 and early 1700s. He was a Calvinist, and he wrote hundreds of hymns, many still in common use today. There are no fewer than 12 of his hymns in our hymnal today, including Joy to the World and Our God, Our Help in Ages Past. When Watts was alive, Calvinist hymnody was largely restricted to singing the Psalms, a venerable practice. The problem wasn't the Psalms, it was the music. A lot of it was tired and uninspired, and English congregationalist singing suffered as a result. Watts wanted to inject a sense of awe and wonder into congregational singing, all in an effort to elevate worshipers and drive home a sense of gratitude for God's mighty acts. Perhaps no other hymn does a better, of jo a better job than this than When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. According to music scholar and retired Stephen F. Austin State University professor Robert Mann, Watts used a word in this hymn that had probably never been used in a hymn before. It's a word that millennials use all the time these days to the point that it has lost its oomph. The word is amazing. Love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all. Amazing. What an apt term to use to describe the love of God in Jesus Christ. We Calvinists have always emphasized the importance of having a sense of awe and wonder with respect to God. We don't treat God as our cosmic buddy. God is far too awesome for that. Instead, we emphasize a sense of awe, focusing on God's glory and majesty. But we also emphasize that sense of wonder wonder at the mercy of a God who is so great, but who loves us in Jesus Christ. Awe and wonder. Just amazing. And now may God continue to bless you and keep you in all that you do this day and in all the days ahead.